Hi everyone, for those of you who don't know Ryan Humiston, he is a vegan bodybuilder and on his YouTube channel he gives a lot of workout advice, uh, he does a lot of workout videos, talks about what exercises are good, what exercises are bad, how to perform certain exercises, that sort of thing, and I've noticed recently his advice has gotten pretty bizarre and, and weird. He's been giving some pretty bad advice here and there too, so... Uh, what we're going to do today is go through some of these workout videos and I'm just going to critique some of the bad advice he's giving. So over the past month, all my chest workouts have been predominantly decline movements. Now the reason for that is, I don't know about you, but for me, I don't think somebody has a fully developed chest until that lower pec gets so muscular, starts to get a little hang to it. There's so much fullness that if your 13 year old self got a hold of it, they get a little chub. One of the unforeseen benefits that I found from tweaking most of the exercises I do and making them more of a decline movement is that it kind of opened up the playbook a little bit more and brought back in exercises that I wasn't connecting with before. So like a flat dumbbell press where at the bottom it's getting a lot of anterior delt. There wasn't really much of a stretch and contraction there. There wasn't really much movement in that pec and then the tricep would jump into the top. Now by tweaking that movement, arching my back more, I get more of a stretch. So obviously I'm opening that chest even more. It's more of a comfortable position for those shoulders and I got a better contraction overall. The best way I found to do these isn't by throwing a plate underneath the bench or even using a decline bench. It's just putting your feet on top and using your hips to to dictate the angle of your body. That way you can kind of adjust the position and see what fits best for you because it might not take much. You might just need a slight angle to have a better, more comfortable position for those shoulders, get a better contraction, and then it's easier to get out of. You can just throw it right on your quads and pop back up. Okay, so Ryan claims that decline pressing movements remove anterior deltoid involvement and that helps him get a better pump or feel or squeeze out of his chest when he's doing pressing. So there's some conflicting evidence here. The most recent paper on this topic I could find was from 2017. It's titled Effects of Bench Press Variations in Competitive Athletes on Muscle Activity and Performance. So they compared how a decline flat and incline bench press affects muscle activation. And what they found was that there was not a statistically significant difference in anterior deltoid activation between the decline flat and incline bench press. Now, the authors noted that this may be because they used high-level athletes in the study, and they may have adjusted their body position and lifting action in an attempt to maintain muscle activation because they've essentially been trained to do this. So there is another recent study where they used uh, athletes that don't have as much training experience, and this paper is from 2010. What they found was that with increasing bench press angle, they found greater anterior deltoid activation, but unfortunately in the study, they didn't do any tests on the uh, decline bench. But we can assume in the study, if they had done tests on the decline bench, they probably would have found decreased anterior deltoid activation. So what does this all mean? Well, chances are bench press angle does affect anterior delt involvement. It's just that this doesn't actually matter. Uh, this, this shouldn't influence your decision to include some of these bench press variations in your routine. What you should consider is how these bench press variations impact your physique development. Like Ryan mentioned at the beginning of the video, he said the reason he's been doing more decline uh, pressing movements is because it focuses on developing his lower pecs. So you shouldn't choose these bench press variations based on anterior delt involvement. You should choose these variations based on chest development. If you have a lacking upper chest, if it's weak and undeveloped, well then you're going to want to implement uh, more high angle pressing movements into your routine because that will help build up your upper chest. It doesn't matter if more interior uh, delts are involved. So yeah, this recommendation to just do more decline pressing just because there's, there's less interior delt involvement, it doesn't make any sense. And uh, worst of all, he recommended doing this really stupid uh, bench press technique where you put your feet up on the bench, you lift your ass off of the bench as well. It's a very unstable, unsafe position. Uh, you're much more likely to uh, get out of balance, get injured. It, it, would also, uh, it would also make it harder to use heavier weights with this because, again, you're unstable. And uh, you're also just not going to be able to get consistent repetitions in because you're just going by feel and sort of eyeballing everything. You're not at a consistent angle each time. 
So, really bad advice here. This was just plain dumb. All right, so we're finishing up with a decline bench variation, doing a couple burnout sets. Now, this is how I know I'm on the right track, because usually I do anything barbell-based. I mean, it tells my shoulder, my anterior delt, and that chest insertion point to go eat a bag of dicks and hurry, and I usually have to stop right there. But because of putting my feet on the bench and really adjusting those hips in a way, and I find that perfect angle for me, where I can really open up those shoulders and it's comfortable, I mean, there's been no issues whatsoever. It's been a crazy soreness I've gotten from it, and it just works really well. So one thing I want you to watch out for, though, is as you watch the B-roll of this, kind of watch how my elbows flare in, not out, and watch, and the best way I can kind of put this and state this is make sure you're driving through that elbow and not through your wrist or through your shoulders. Really drop that elbow, flex it up, and make sure you're pushing with your chest and nothing else. So I have a number of issues with what he just said and did. Uh, for one thing, again, why is he doing the stupid crap on the flat bench where he's putting his feet up on the bench, he's lifting his ass off the bench even, he's putting himself in an unstable, compromised position where not only can he not bench press properly, not lift as much weight, but he's also increasing his risk of injury. So if you want to do more decline pressing, that's fine but do it properly on a decline bench. Why are you being stupid and doing this dumb crap on a flat bench? Doesn't make any sense. Now, Ryan mentioned that you should really make sure that you have your elbows tucked in when you're doing the barbell bench press. Uh, that ensures that your shoulders are in a safe position, and he also claimed that it really makes it easier to activate your chest muscles. Uh, that can be a little counterintuitive. So if you have too much of an elbow tuck and not enough of an elbow flare, that can cause elbow pain. It can put your elbows in a position where rotational forces are being put against it. That can cause pain and discomfort. A very extreme elbow tuck can also have your elbows come in front of the barbell, resulting in more stress being placed on your tricep, uh, taking focus away from the chest, and because of the way the muscle fibers in your chest uh, are angled and aligned, having an over-tucked position can prevent some of these muscle fibers from contributing to the movement. So I'm referencing an article by Greg Knuckles here. He goes into uh, detail about proper elbow position and how over-tucking can be an issue. So this is just something you want to be aware of. Now there's absolutely a place for close grip bench, incline, decline, but flat bench press is the most overrated dumpster fire exercise you can do. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Now, a lot of it has to do with the barbell itself, because unless you're an experienced lifter, it's going to promote bad form. Because when shit hits the fan, what happens? Because those hands are perpendicular, people like to flare those elbows out, try to get those shoulders involved, and then sign up to a pec tear. And this doesn't happen on incline or decline because the angle, because the position you're in, that shoulder's in less of a compromised position. So there is no worries there. But on flat, absolutely does. So why not just avoid it? Why not do dumbbells, turn those hands at 45 degrees, and push from a position of strength and a position where you get a better contraction overall. All right, so again, I a lot of things I disagree with here. So first of all, Ryan claimed that, you know, the barbell bench press, it's only really good and safe to use if you're an experienced lifter and you can do the lift properly. Uh, how How is this, like, unique to the, the barbell bench press? Like, I, I think you need to perform every exercise properly to reduce injury risk. So maybe just do the exercise properly and then like everything's good. It's kind of a weird argument here. Uh, he also mentioned that the barbell bench press is more prone to technique breakdown because he claims you're locked into this pronated position and you're more likely to have extreme elbow flare. Well, people flare their elbows not because they're locked into position or anything. It's because they have muscle imbalances or muscle weaknesses where they end up favoring their shoulder has nothing to do with them using a barbell versus a dumbbell. I've done personal training for quite a long time. I've had clients use dumbbells and I've seen plenty of people flare their elbows out using dumbbells. So that doesn't make any sense. And uh, he also like claimed injury risk is higher. I don't see how injury risk is higher with a barbell versus dumbbells. Dumbbells require a lot more stability and control to use. So especially, again, if you're an inexperienced athlete, uh, you're making these recommendations primarily for inexperienced people. Well, if you're inexperienced in the gym and you're using, you're performing an exercise that requires more stability and control, wouldn't you say you're more prone to injury using that exercise? Doesn't really make any sense. And uh, his last argument was that, well, with dumbbells, you can get a better squeeze, a better contraction, more muscle activation. 
Well, again, there's research on this, and the research doesn't really support this claim. So this paper was from 2011, a comparison of muscle activity and one rep max strength of three chest press exercises with different stability requirements. So basically what they did was uh, measured elect uh, electrical activity, muscle activation using three different bench press variations. So a dumbbell bench press, barbell bench press, and a Smith machine bench, bench press. Electrical activity in the pectoralis major and interior deltoid did not differ during the lifts. So uh, they had the same amount of chest activation and interior delt activation uh, with all of these variations. Didn't matter if you're using dumbbells, uh, barbells, or Smith machine. Chest activation was the same, and interior deltoid activation was the same. Electrical activity in the biceps brachii increased with stability requirements, so they found that the Smith machine had the least biceps involvement because it's the most stable exercise. Barbell bench press was somewhere in the middle, and dumbbells had the most biceps involvement because, of course, it's the, the least stable exercise. And they also found that uh, dumbbell bench press had the, the least triceps involvement compared to the barbell bench press and the Smith machine. And you should also keep in mind that in the study, the study participants used much lighter loads when using the dumbbell bench press. Uh, they had to lift with 17% lighter weight compared to the barbell bench press. So it's uh, kind of crazy for Ryan to claim that, oh, well, if you lift with dumbbells, you get better muscle activation, you're in a position where you, where you have more strength, when, no, um, Muscle activation is essentially identical between the dumbbell bench press and the barbell bench press. Uh, you have to lift with lighter weight with the dumbbell bench press, and it's a, it's a less stable exercise. It's harder to perform, I'd say, injury risk. At least depending on what type of loads you're lifting with is uh, higher with the dumbbell bench press. So. I don't know why you would make any of these claims. I, I think you're just kind of biased here because you don't actually understand how to perform the barbell bench press properly, which is pretty obvious from all of these videos you've made about benching. You're doing ridiculous things like putting your feet on the bench, lifting your ass off of the bench while doing a barbell bench press. So, uh, dude, you should just hire like a good strength coach, like hire somebody who knows how to teach you how to bench press properly. And I think you'd fix all of these problems you have with like shoulder pain, not feeling the muscle properly. I bet you a few people are puckered up with me just standing next to this bar because a lot of people reached out and they said, hey, you can do a video on trap bar deadlifts and just rest assured, it's not the exercise itself. It's how people use it. A lot of people use this as a crutch because they can't do regular deadlifts. And to me, that's not acceptable. And also it's indication that you're probably not even doing these correctly if you can't do regular deadlifts because there's a similar form involved and it's just how you load your hips. So just know that you're gonna have to go back to basics. I would ditch these for a while, go back to regular straight bar deadlifts, figure that form out because again, it's gonna just aid you down the road and it's gonna increase your squat form and just overall you're gonna be a better lifter, but make sure you don't use a movement like this as a crutch. All right, so again, I have a lot of disagreements here. First of all, there is absolutely no need for anyone to do deadlifts unless there is a sports specific need to do so. So unless you are doing powerlifting or strongman, where conventional deadlifting is just a part of those sports, then there's no need to do conventional deadlifts in your training and you can use trap bars as a perfectly suitable replacement. Now, I'm going to refer to an article uh, made by Greg Knuckles. I'll leave it linked in the description in case any of you want to, uh, to read it. But uh, Greg outlines uh, a number of interesting facts about the trap bar deadlift. For one thing, the movement is extremely similar. It essentially hits all of the same target muscle groups. The only big difference being is that the trap bar deadlift focuses more on your quads. So I think it's kind of interesting that uh, Ryan, he claimed that if you do conventional deadlifts with a barbell, uh, it has more carryover to a squat. Well. No, it, it wouldn't. The, the exercise that works your quads more would probably have more carryover to the squat. So if you're going to use some sort of accessory exercise to the squat, then a trap bar deadlift would probably be better. And on top of that, the trap bar deadlift is probably better for anyone interested in any sports because you end up using heavier loads with more power and velocity and higher total workloads with a trap bar deadlift. So 
Again, doesn't make any sense that he'd say a barbell, uh, conventional barbell deadlift is like a crutch when you can lift with heavier loads, uh, you have more power, velocity, and more overall workload uh, performed with a trap bar deadlift. And uh, it's uh, there's more carryover to more sports as well. So it's kind of strange how he wouldn't recommend that over a barbell, uh, you know, deadlift. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, like I, it's kind of weird making a video criticizing a vegan bodybuilder. I don't normally do that sort of thing, but uh, Ryan has gotten to the point where he's actually promoting like complete nonsense that is actually harmful. Some people might actually hurt themselves doing some of these things, so I felt compelled to make this video, but I think Ryan's an alright guy. I don't think he has any ill intentions when he makes videos like this. He seems like a pretty nice guy. He went vegan for the animals. He, uh, you know, uh, he, he was involved with dog rescue organizations, and he figured, like, hey, if I'm helping these dogs, how can I kill and eat other animals? So he's a nice guy. Um, I'd like you all to go over to his channel, uh, subscribe to him, support him and everything. But yeah, he gets some things wrong and I hope he sees this video and makes some corrections and, uh, you know, adjusts some things with his recommendations and training and just becomes better at what he does. But if you like this video, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon or through my website. I have some funny perks you may find interesting. If you're looking for clothing, then check out the Vegan Gains store. And if you're looking for online coaching, then check out Quality Gains. He offers customized meal and training programs. And if you click the link in the description, you can get a free ebook. And as always, keep making those vegan gains. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.